and welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and hopefully explain it in a really simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most I'm going to try to tie in to the current school curriculum. So when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. Today's episode we're going to be finding out all about pressure. Under pressure. Pressure is defined as the amount of force pressing on a certain area. All three, so pressure, force and area, are connected. The equation for pressure is force divided by area. And of course, we can use our trusty triangle for this equation, with force on the top and pressure and area along the bottom. This means that pressure and area are inversely proportional. So if area decreases, the pressure will increase and vice versa. So if a force is acting over a bigger area, this means it will have a smaller pressure than if the same force was acting over a smaller area. Does this make sense? The SI unit for pressure is Newtons per meter squared. And this makes sense because pressure is force divided by area. So you have Newtons divided by meter squared. But Newtons per meter squared is also known as Pascals. Pascal! So if a force of one Newton was spread over an area of one meter squared, the pressure exerted would be one Pascal. Let's look at an example of pressure and area's inversely proportional relationship, which is absolutely mind boggling. Let's compare a girl walking in stilettos to an elephant step. So let's say the girl has a mass of 50 kilograms. To convert this to a force, and presuming we're on Earth, we multiply 50 kilograms by 9.81 meters per second squared, which gives us that she weighs 490.5 newtons. And let's say the stiletto heel is 25 millimeters squared. Wouldn't want to walk in those. So teeny tiny. Now this is the same as 0.0025 meters squared, or 2.5 times 10 to the minus five meters squared. Now we want it in meters to stick to SI units. So to get the pressure she exerts on the ground, remember the triangle. So force divided by area. So we divide 490.5 newtons by 2.5 times 10 to the minus five meters squared which gives us that she exerts 19,620,000 pascals on the ground. Whew. This can be rounded to 20 million pascals. Right, now for the elephant. Let's say the average elephant has a mass of about 5,000 kilograms. Yikes. Let's convert that into force by multiplying 5,000 kilograms by 9.81 meters per second squared, which gives us that the elephant weighs 49,050 newtons, which is literally like a hundred times more than the girl. But an elephant's foot has an area of about 0.025 meters squared, or 2.5 times 10 to the minus two meters squared. So to calculate the pressure, we divide 49,050 newtons by 2.5 times 10 to the minus two meters squared, which means that the elephant exerts 1,962,000 pascals on the ground, which can be rounded to two million pascals. If you remember, the girl in stilettos exerted a pressure of about 20 million pascals, whereas the elephant is only exerting a pressure of like two million pascals. That's crazy, that's like 10 times more. See how powerful we can be. On to atmospheric pressure, just briefly. Atmospheric pressure is around us all the time. The weight of the atmosphere is constantly pushing against us, but we're used to it, so we can't feel it. The lower you are, the more atmosphere there is above you. So the pressure due to the weight of the atmosphere increases. If you get higher, like go up a mountain, there is less atmosphere above you, so the atmospheric pressure decreases. For example, at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 100,000 pascals. 
But at the top of Mount Everest, which is about 8,800 meters high, the atmospheric pressure is only 33,000 pascals. So the lower you go, the higher the atmospheric pressure. Remember that? Similarly, the pressure in liquids increases with depth. Just like with the weight of the atmosphere changing atmospheric pressure, the deeper you are in a liquid, the more pressure will be exerted due to the weight of the liquid above. And it's this water pressure that causes upthrust and makes things float. If you submerge an object in water, it will experience water pressure in all directions. But because water pressure increases with depth, the force pushing upwards at the bottom of the object will be greater than the force pushing downwards at the top of the object. This causes an overall upwards force called upthrust. A boat sinks until the upthrust is equal to its weight, and at this point it will start floating. Whereas if the upthrust is less than the object's weight, it will sink. I say weight, and I do mean weight, because we're dealing with forces here, and therefore Newtons. Thank you for listening! I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe, and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below, and I will try to do a video for you.